Right, hi there YouTube. It's been a short while since I've put out another video. Uh, blah. <laughs> Let's try that one again. Right, hi there YouTube. It's yours truly here again. And yeah, it's been a short while since I've put out a new video. But I hope that you guys have had a wonderful Christmas and hope that you're going to have a brilliant new year now today we're going to be taking a look at uh, zorin os which is an ubuntu based operating system now i've not actually heard about this until today when i was trying to compare the easiest operating systems to install versus the hard ones so what i say is what we'll do we'll have a go at installing this and we're going to go for Zorin 16.3 Lite. That's the version because of the laptop that I'm running is kind of old. It's so old, it's haunted. <laughs> but yeah, on a level, we're going to have a look at um, installing this. I've already got a copy of it downloading and it's two and a half gigabytes in file size. But just before we get to um, uh, copying off our <coughs> USB drive, I reckon we'll have a look at their website right quick. And that's coming up after the intro. Be strong. Be strong. Okay, so this is Zorin OS's website. And there's the new Zorin OS 17, apparently now, that has arrived. But, yeah, it's an alternative to Windows and Mac OS designed to make your computer faster, more powerful, secure, and privacy respecting. Let's go on to see what else it says here. Um, Forbes say... It's just so clean and polished, I don't really anticipate a learning curve for new users. ZDNet say it's exactly what a desktop operating system should be. TechRadar say it has everything in terms of offering friendly user, usable experience to those coming from Windows or Mac. And PC World go on to say, when speed is of the essence, Zorin OS really shines. So I'm assuming that this guy is going to be actually something of a cross between kind of Windows and um, Mac. Uh, yeah, so less lag, more speed. Computer should work as fast as we do. So apparently it runs lightning quick. Uh, revive your old PC and help the environment. Now this part I actually do quite like because there is a lot of old machines out there in the world. And um, rather than me wasting them off, if they can be saved, that's a pretty cool thing. So because of the lower hardware requirements of Zorin OS alone, we're expecting to extend the life of the city's PCs by 30 to 40 percent and that's in the city of Vicenza, uh, Vicenza Italy if I'm pronouncing that right and yeah reliable and secure apparently Zorin OS is built on the same open source software that powers the US Department of Defense and computers on the ISS well yeah kinda I mean, um, the U.S. Department of Defense use some flavor of Linux, as does the ISS. Um, so, yeah, it's same open source in that sense. That's Linux based. But I don't think that they run natively Ubuntu. It's probably something else. But that's for a look at for another day, I reckon. And apparently... It's got privacy in mind and yeah, there's a whole sweet ton of apps that you can get for this guy. Apparently play games, 
Um, yeah, you can attach your phone to your machine as well and compatible with documents and files and yeah that's basically the overview of that now what we'll do is we'll have a look at installing it so there's a button here that you have to go and hit download Zorin OS well we've gone for the light version because as we said uh, just before the intro it's for basic use on low spec PCs that are up to 15 years old. Well I've already downloaded it, it's up there but if you were to click download then you can just do that. There's the whole skip to download thing there. If we press it again it's just going to restart the download so I'll just cancel that. I've already got it there it's it's zoom in it's already there look so what we'll now do is we're going to now need to flash off a copy of that and I'll show you how to do that right quick excuse the mess so what we'll want to do first of all if I can do this without kicking the tripod over as always then we will so I'm going to minimize that and close that and I'm looking for a copy of Rufus which I've got so double click on that if you haven't got Rufus then I'll leave that in the description bar below I've already plugged in my flash drive into my machine so what we'll go ahead and do is we're gonna select the file go into downloads and it's there the top one Zorin double click that and I do believe hit start and we'll write the I write it in ISO mode to see if that will work and okay So this might take a short while and we'll come back to that as soon as it's done. Okay, well, we're almost done now uh, on copying those files across on flashing our USB drive as I spoke a little bit too soon. Uh, we're about 90% here. So we'll just give that a few minutes more, or a few moments more rather. So it's just right in Squash FS at the moment. That's a fair size file. As I said, the whole lot is about two and a half gig in size, so you're going to want a flash drive of at least that. And once this is written, we'll go ahead and have a look at the BIOS of the system that I propose to run this on. So yeah, I reckon we'll just pause this right quick while that finishes. Okay, that's almost done. That was only literally just a few seconds and I should get an alert in a moment. Uh, I should do. It's just closing off the flash drive. So we'll just wait a little longer. Yeah, and it is Ubuntu based. I don't know if you was able to see that. But yeah, it is Ubuntu based. So this should make it nice and easy for new users and that's now done so what I can now do is back out and we'll get our laptop there's our drive and what we'll do 
Let's turn our attention now to the laptop. If we can zoom in. I think that's probably about right. Okay. So I'll need to get rid of that. We'll press and hard power off. And we'll go into our system BIOS. And on this AMOLO Pro, that's just a case of hitting the F2 key. And we'll see how old this thing is. As I said, I'm running, well, I'm going to be running Zorin 16.3 Lite. So it should run. And we have 3 gig RAM in there with a 2 gig processor. So this is pretty much the same as what you've seen in other videos. And now what we can do is go ahead and install a flash drive like so. Control Alt Delete, go back into the BIOS and make sure that it's in the boot menu. And this BIOS is a little bit slow loading up. But what do you expect? It's an old machine. Okay, let's go over to boot. It's there, so I can just F10 that and exit. And let's see what we get. If I've done this right, it should work. Let's just give that a moment. Real time video, people, real time video. Try or install Zorin. Oh, okay. Well, we're going to go for the install on this. So it's nice and simple. Uh, we did press enter. And it wants to do an MD5 checksum. Tell you what, we'll leave that. Uh, Real-time video anyway, as we said, so this might be quite long. But then again, I mean, from my experience of installing Linux, it doesn't usually take that long anyway. Um, yeah. So we'll we'll just run with this. Uh, checking the MD5 sums, that's from the download itself. It's to make sure that it's not um, corrupted in any way. That's what the MD5 checksums all about. So it compares uh, essentially a set of keys. Well, the the actual MD5 algorithm will check. Uh, obviously that. The um, algorithm keys are all pretty much the same, uh, so that there's no uh, unauthorized viruses or corruptions going on. So it just verifies to download, essentially. You can control C to skip that, but we won't. Check finish, no errors found, so we can continue. Oh, that does look quite nice. Oh, that does look quite nice indeed. Nice picture of a mountain there. Uh, well, we can either try or install. We're going to go with install, I think. Uh, keyboard layout is English UK. And English UK here. Um, 
I'm not going to bother connecting to Wi-Fi. Not right now. So we'll just continue. And let's zoom in a little more. Uh, census lets Zorin OS developers count the number of users anonymously. Well, whatever, I'm not connected to the internet, so... Well, not on this machine. I don't think the Wi-Fi card is still working, so I need to sort that out. And I've now got options here, so I can either install it alongside Anti-X or raise the disk and install Zorin. And that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. And... None OK, and just install. It's asking me to write the changes to the disk, so we'll go ahead and do that. Select my time zone. Well, you just click in there and type where you are. And it should be coming up with London, but it isn't. Oh, right, now it is. And hit continue. My name, we'll just call it Hacker. Choose a password, as always, route backwards. Says short password, but whatever. And we'll let Zorin OS 16.3 go ahead and uh, format partitions then. Let's straighten this up a little bit. I think I can do this without having the tripod over. There we go. It's a little better. So we'll just let that do its thing. It's copying files across now. It shouldn't take too long to, to do that. And as always, your sort of time that it takes to install your mileage in that respect will vary depending on what machine you're using. As you said, this is only a 2 gig processor in that uh, with 3 gig RAM. So, yeah, we're about halfway copying. Not much to be said at the moment. Other than the fact that, yeah, it's a typical sort of Ubuntu kind of theme to it. But obviously with Zorin's own twist. I must say, it does look quite attractive so far. They've done a good job with it to begin with. 
Nice and simple, nice and easy and straightforward. Haven't encountered any problems yet. So pretty much any user could do this. Unlike uh, the opposite end of the scale, like with either Slackware, Gen 2 or Arch Linux, those can be a real pain to install. And that's something for another day we'll have a look at. But yeah, most Ubuntu systems or Ubuntu based software environments are typically fairly easy to install. And this is no exception so far. just wondered what that, that sort of down arrow did there but yeah as you see roll window up I don't know what that does I'm not going to play around with it while it's installing he says oh that's handy Click that and then you get an output there so you can see what it's doing. That's kind of handy. Zoom in a little bit so you can see that. Shouldn't take too long. Wow, time's going quick. That's 21 minutes almost already. That's gone quite fast. We're just sort of configuring our hardware at the moment. Only got just that bit to do, shouldn't take too long. Most Linux distributions, as I said, don't take long anyway. This should be done at near the half hour mark. It's about right for that sort of machine. Then once it's all loaded up, we'll have a, a little look at it.
it's quite a process so during this time you may want to elect to go and get a drink of your choice feel free to pause at any point if you feel the desire to should have said that at the beginning of the video it would take quite a while Looking forward to seeing what features it's got. Should be good. By the looks of this, it might come complete with LibreOffice on there as well. Because I did see just up here that it removed some repositories to deal with LibreOffice. So that's kind of handy. If it's got that. I was just removing some more modules there. But yeah, so far, nice and easy to set up. About the half hour mark, if it hasn't done, I'll probably elect to maybe pause it. Because that, yeah, it's dragging a little bit. And we're at 27 minutes almost.
28 minutes still installing might be worth a try on a new machine to see um, how quick that installs it will be interesting to um, yeah to see how that goes I'm predicting we should be done at nearly the half hour mark or sort of slightly over. I think it's going to be just over, isn't it? We're at 29 minutes. Okay, that's the half hour mark. We'll just give that a short while longer. I don't really particularly want to pause the video. Um, just purely because this is a real time thing. At least it gives you guys some idea of how long it's likely to take with regards to using a machine of that spec. There we are, it's complete. So we'll restart now, but first of all what we'll need to do, one moment, is we'll need to remove the flash drive so it doesn't keep rebooting itself back into that. Now we'll go ahead and hit restart now and see what we get. So the installation's done at the 31 minute mark. Has that crashed? Hmm, <laughs> that's interesting. Hard drive light seems to be doing something. But all we have at the moment is that. Okay, I don't like normally doing this, but I'm kind of getting a little bit impatient. And I want to see if this actually is going to run. So I'm going to press and hold the power key and go from a hard boot and see if this actually works otherwise I've just wasted 32 minutes of my life still make an interesting fail video if it doesn't work
Well, that's not good. Or is it? Oh no, it's working. Just had to give that a moment. We have our Zorin icon there. Or logo, whatever you want to call it. Let's just give that a moment to try and boot up. So we're at 33 minutes and we're attempting to fire it up. See what we get. Okay, prompted for our password. And hopefully we get a nice GUI. Nice GUI, it's appearing to load. Okay, let's see what we have on our start menu. Accessories, games, graphics, internet, multimedia, office, settings and system. Oh, what's this? Start tour? Or no thanks? Yeah, we'll have a look at tour. So open the menu to launch apps. Yeah, well, we know that. Launch Zorin Appearance. Yeah, go on then. We'll do that. Oh, by the way, if you want to upgrade to Zorin OS Pro Lite, they'll charge you for that. So theme. Let's choose. Can we choose that? Yeah. So it's all just basic stuff. Hit next. Uh, well, we're not connected to the internet, so it's the Wi-Fi card doesn't work on this. That's another uh, video for another day. But okay, let's have a look at some of the accessories. What do we got here? Archive manager, calculator, <laughs> what? Catfish file surge. <laughs> okay. That's a hell of a name to call it. So, yeah, you, I don't think that's got anything to do with catfishing. <laughs> Characters, clocks, file manager fonts, onboard, redshift, and screenshot. Okay, back. What games has it got? So, Isle Riot Solitaire. <laughs> Where did they get that from? What a name. Mahjong, typical Minesweeper. Quadrupercel, whatever that is, and Sudoku. Uh, graphics. So it's got GIMP. Which is GNU image, image manipulation tool, LibreOffice Draw, Document Viewer, Document Scanner. That could come in quite handy. Ristretto Image Viewer. Uh, Internet. Yeah, okay, so that's going to be a Firefox web browser, Thunderbird Mail, and whatever Ramina is. No idea. Not played with that. 
I'm assuming it's going to be like some sort of other browser there. Possibly a browser or something. Multimedia, so you've got cheese. I'm assuming that's for your camera if you've got it. This machine doesn't. Parole media player, rhythm box, sound recorder, and some XF burn. And then office, that's the one that would be handy for me. So you've got document viewer at the top. LibreOffice, Calculator, LibreOffice Draw, LibreOffice Impress and Writer. Let's open up LibreOffice and see what that's like. See if it runs it. As we said, this is a pretty pants machine, but yeah, it does appear to to want to try and load it. I'll just give that a moment, see if Office will fire up. And zoom in a little. This machine is certainly struggling. Okay. It's done that. So we've got spreadsheets, presentations, draw drawing. Uh, I'm assuming that the reason why Math Formula and Base Database are not highlighted is you may have to upgrade that. Don't know. Let's open up a document. See what that does. No, don't need to look at the release notes. Just shut that down, but... References... Layout, insert. Okay, so it's just like a basic form of Microsoft Office. Zoom out so you can see that a bit. Yeah, not too bad. View. Review. Yeah, find tools. Let's see if Shift Windows S does anything. No. No, so we can't do like snipping tool as what Windows does. It's unfortunate. But yeah, it all appears quite clean. It looks quite nice. Don't bother saving that. Let's have a look and... See if we can change our desktop. Yeah, we've got different wallpapers there. What's that? Looks like the ground or something. Zorin's one. Into all these patterns or whatever, you've got that. Some bird's eye view of something or another. Mmm. Quite nice pictures. Might be the Rockies or the Grand Canyon or something or another. But yeah, that's Sorin. Took a while to install, but we got there. 
And yeah, it looks quite nice. Wonder if it's got some sort of terminal on here. Wonder if there is a terminal. Oh yeah, under system. Yeah, so it's got terminal in black and green as standard. So yeah, we can sort of use that if we wanted to sort of install programs or remove things. Yeah, it's got terminal that. What else? App support, tour, Thuna file manager, task manager. Let's have a look at that. Mm, you can see what the CPU and memory is doing in real time. That's kind of cool. Yeah. For a basic operating system, it looks quite good. It's what I would have expected off of an Ubuntu-based thing. And I think we'll probably just leave it there, as we've seen most of that. And all the rest of that is pretty much just going to be generic. So what we'll do is we'll shut that down and proceed to close out. It's been emotional, been good, not too bad. So there we are, that brings us to the end of another video and quite a long one that one. And that was installing uh, Zorin 16.3 on uh, that laptop, that was the light version. And as always I'm going to leave the links for that download in the description bar below along with um, Oh, what was it? I said it was. Uh, Rufus. That's it. So you can obviously create your bootable USBs. Anywho, as I said, that brings us to the end of another video for today. And thank you all again, dear lovely viewers, for subscribing, viewing and commenting and being a part of this channel. And I'm wishing you all of the very best for now and for the new year as well. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. So for now, that's been yours truly here, Club 40, and I'm out. I will catch you in another one. Mm, that did shut down pretty quick. Oh, shoot, I'm still recording. <laughs> I could go in the outtakes as well, can't it? All right. Once again, thank you, dear lovely viewer. See you in the next one.